everyone. Good morning, Rosie. <laughs> I bought biscuits up for Rosie. Um, <laughs> so, here we are, um, sitting in my garden, and it's still February, but it's... She's having a drink. Um, but it's such a lovely day, and I thought I would come up here and do the intro for the new playlist that I've got going, which is called A Needle A Pin and A Bottle Of Gin. And the reason we came up with this is because my friend and I um, tried to have as many short adventures last year as we could. And um, everywhere I go, I sew. So I took sewing with me, just slow stitch bits and pieces, um, some kawandi stitching and um, some sashiko stitching that I was doing on a craft fair apron thing. Um, and so you'll get to see these as, as we go through. So I'm sitting up here in the sunshine and I thought that I would introduce this and at the same time do a little bit of slow stitching with you just to get things going and be outdoors in the sun because it's just such a lovely day. And um, we all need this right now. So I've got two little projects on the go. The first is a book cover um, and this has got some lovely little memories on it. So this is basically going to be a book cover that's going to have felt pages inside for me to be able to demonstrate embroidery stitches to my classes. <clears throat> but I thought rather than just doing a basic book cover, I would make it a little bit vintage as I like to do. So on this one, it's got um, a corner of one of my nan's handkerchiefs. I have a whole bag of them. Actually, I can show you. I have a whole bag of them in a really beautiful little pouch, which is also embroidered. And it's absolutely full of handkerchiefs that belonged to my nan and her oldest sister. And they, both of them had a thing for embroidered handkerchiefs and they were always beautiful and they always had one in their pocket. And in fact, my great aunt, my nan's oldest sister, Ray, she, when, when she died, she was 97, I think she was very good age. And when my mum and my nan and I were um, sorting the house out, she used to work as a hand model for liberties, for gloves and so forth. And um, so she had beautiful clothes and all her cardigans were Jaeger and they had pockets and in every pocket there was a beautifully folded handkerchief in one pocket and a folded tissue in the other. They were exquisite, I couldn't believe it. Anyway, so I've incorporated a corner of one of her handkerchiefs onto here and then I've just found some lace and this was some antique lace that was in my great aunt's sewing box so I wanted a little piece of that too. And I quite like the idea of poppies. So I'm not a great lover of red, the colour red. Um, but this is a quite a nice sort of faded old rose kind of colour so I wanted to incorporate that. So that's the first one. So I'm stitching this section here with um, some cream with a tiny little bit of like a rose feel to it. Um, it's um, Silco thread and I've split it into three strands so it's normally a six stranded um, and it's got the, the lace pattern um, of just like little arches so what I'm thinking of doing is just zigzagging across this section and um, just to kind of hold it but give it a little bit of structure so this bit will actually be in the edging so you won't see it. The back of this incidentally is just some fleecy felt so I just wanted to give it a little bit of oomph but not not too much because I don't want it to be thick and um, and I want it to lay nicely as a book cover. So I'm just going to do the diagonals going one way and then I'm going to come back and catch the diagonals going in the opposite direction and hopefully it will be um, quite a nice design. So I'll do the first one and then you can see what I'm talking about. I might move that pin though because they're 
notorious for getting in the way. I love sitting up here listening to the birds and I don't get enough time to do it really so my ambition this year is to do more in my little garden Hey Posy Rosie nice to get the pins out of these so I like getting them attached because <laughs> they catch on look everything <laughs> so I'm trying to come back up where I went in on the the outward stitches um, I want them to meet so I'm trying not to overlap but honestly it really doesn't matter um, and in the grand scheme of things it'll just be the story of the piece um, however neat or non-neat it's stitched whoops so that's the first little arc so I'm going to go down and do all of these um, and on the back I'm not going to I'm not going to finish off I'm just going to run the um, thread through those the backs of those stitches so it just catches this is going to be lined so all of this will be hidden anyway but I'm not going to go backwards now until I get to the end and then I'll come back so I'm just going to carry on now I'm not going to try and go over the points because that's that will muddle the points so I'm just going to start again as I did before Oop, watch my tension and um, and I, I might do something like a, maybe a French knot or something there. So it's just stitching diagonals really. Is that near enough? Maybe. And I'm not that concerned as to whether the stitches are the same size. Um, I just want them to give a little bit more pattern to the lace that's already there so it's it's basically you're adding your own story so you're you're adding to the story of whoever designed that lace in the first place and this lace is from um, the 1920s so it's a really lovely piece of old lace um, it came in the sewing stuff that came from my my great aunt who was in Singapore and um, this is from one of the, the pieces that came back a piece of linen and it was on an edge of it and I've taken it off and decided that it can have a new life there's quite a lot of it so it, it probably will end up on other things So I'm just, just gently arcing round, following that pattern and telling my story. So any slow stitching really, any kind of embroidery, you're telling a story and I really love journaling in fabrics and um, threads. I think it's a lovely way of um, giving life to a, a memory, to a wish. Without the, could do without the pins though. You can just tell that they're going to get in the way. Actually, can I take that off now? Yes, I can. So underneath the cream lace, there is some white lace here. And this is much more modern. And this was in um, a bag of bits and pieces that came from my mum's house. So I've got generations on this little book cover and I love that 
my mum was a teacher. She taught needlework years and years ago, although she didn't teach needlework when I came along, she'd stopped. And, um, but she didn't teach me to sew, interestingly. So it was more of, more my nan that got me into sewing. Um, but my mum was very, very encouraging. And I didn't do so good at school, but I did incredibly well in, in arts. Um, and went on to do that further. So she was a big influence, although she didn't actually teach the keep popping up. She didn't actually teach me so much to sew, and ma mainly because she was busy. She was a teacher. She was still a teacher. She was a an adult lecturer, which is weirdly what I became. And um, and I do feel her. I have a needle in there. I do feel her a lot when I sit and stitch so it's a nice way of adding my my memories and my thoughts into something that has come through from her family which ultimately is my family so there we go we keep going here comes Rosie Posey here comes Rosie Posey you put paw prints all over my quilt. <laughs> you have. You put paw prints all over my quilt. Cute girl. This is sewing. We're sewing. Hey, lovely girl. Hey, lovely girl. She is. Makes a change for, for me to be filming and Rosie not snoring on the sofa. <laughs> Do I like being up here? She can mooch about. Eat things she's not supposed to eat bark at neighbours, chase the pigeons off, <laughs> do all the dog stuff. stitches now. Can you hear all the all the birds in the background? <laughs> We've got a rookery up the hill. There's always somebody doing DIY out here. So there's always a sound of something being sanded or drilled or <laughs> chopped up. And the sound of life. And the weekends there's lawn mowers and children. It's lovely. I'm sitting next to my pond and Rosie thinks it's a big giant water bowl so if you can hear drinking in the background she's got a perfectly good water bowl down beside me but she'd prefer to drink out of the pond and it's rainwater so they're both as good as each other and they've all come from the same place I'm not sure I'd want to drink out of my pond though <laughs> it needs a bit of TLC after the winter. Got rather a lot too many leaves in it. It's so lovely being up here in the warmth of the sun and I can see so much coming into life now. Um, spring flowers are starting to come everywhere. My quince is beginning to flower. Um, and it's just a joy when that happens. And I, I forget where I've planted everything. So it's like a load of surprises. It's so nice.
So I'm nearly back to the beginning now. So you can see I get the sunshine. I've got there's a, a plum tree behind where you are and it makes shadows. But can you see I've just given it a little bit of a twist. So now that's secured and actually it's now secured the lace underneath, although I probably will do something along that edge because that's going to get caught on things. Um, so there you go, I'll carry on and finish this and um, and we'll have a look at the, at the second book cover. And then the second one, <laughs> Rosie, what are you doing? Hello. Rosie's just wandering around the garden going, have we got any more treats, Mama? <laughs> Not yet. So the other one that I thought I'd do, want to see? <laughs> it's sewing, it's really boring. It's really boring for you. Um, the other one that I wanted to do is also a book cover, but this is going to be for something different. Now I did mention in the previous video that this year I want to do a 365 project. Normally you would do a five minute embroidery every day, but what I've decided to do is rather than doing a five minute every day, which is quite unrealistic for me because I'm in and out and in and out, um, that I would make a book and then I would embroider on the pillowcase that I talked about before. So my nan has these had these old pillowcases that she made up that were pillow slips that looked after your pillow so you put your pillowcase over the top and um, I'm retiring one of them so I'm going to embroider on that and then I'm going to stitch it into a book so the whole of this year will be in a book in a journal in a stitched journal and it will tell the story so what I'm actually doing is on my phone I am noting down on each day what I want to embroider then when I'm away and I have time to sit, I will slow stitch embroider the 365 project. So obviously you're gonna come along with me for this one. And there will be other things that I will be slow stitching while we're away. But I thought it might be a little fun project to do some of those, you know, on holiday when I've got time. And um, next month we're, uh, my friend and I and our dogs are off to Wales. And, um, so there'll be some nice adventures there and we're going for about 10 days probably so we're camping and we're cottaging so we're, there'll be some work coming from there but um this one is is a slightly different it's got it's floral which is i love um it's a piece of soft linen linen cotton mix so it's quite a lovely one to stitch to and then i've I found lots of antique lace again in my my nan's stitching box and so forth and this would have been a collar on a dress so it's very pretty it's got some gorgeous details on it some lovely little kind of like French knot type details and I wanted to have some of that on the front of the book so I've actually cut a section out which you can see here um, which is at the time felt awful but it's just sat in a bag and I don't look at it and so I have decided and it's the same with the hankies they sit in this little pouch and I never see them so I've decided that this year I am going to start using some of the antique bits and pieces that are precious to me um, I'm not going to be using them in things that are going out of my, my world. They're staying within me, but I thought I'm, I'm going to create some things that will be my heirlooms to pass on. So these are heirlooms that have come to me. I want them to continue in the family, but not be, um, not be sat in a box or sat in a bag and then just gone, oh yes, that's so-and-so's memories. Because I want them to be my memories and I want them to be memories I can pass on to my daughter and her family potentially. So there's this um, and then I've got some lovely broderie anglais which may or may not be used. Um, there's some little, those are little daisies and they're from the 70s. I remember these being stitched onto clothes when I was little. That's gone on to that one. Um, and then these, this was um, a petticoat and again, it's got the most beautiful embroidered edge, 
with detailing and it's so pretty so what I've done with that one because I didn't want to overlay this I've decided I'm going to have a panel on the inside cover so this is going to be a work in progress and obviously this is going to happen whilst I'm needle and pin and a bottle of ginning um, but I will go into far more detail with this one as well and obviously when I'm when I'm actually sewing I'll close up but I want to roll you back to last summer when the sun was so hot that most of us were perspiring everywhere and and flagging and not knowing what to do and so my best mate and I disappeared off for um, little trips and um, there's a couple that I videoed in one is there's two videos from Mercy so far and there's one from Bridport and this year there will be uh, um, quite a few more so I'm putting this in a playlist all on its own it's going to be called a needle a pin and a bottle of gin um, that's because when I when we pack to go away <laughs> it always involves needles pins and bottles of gin so we decided to call it that a um, bit of fun whether it's gin tea water or whatever um, I usually have something on the go while I'm stitching because it's it can be a slow process and those of you who work with a lot of fabrics will know that um, fabrics are quite dusty and you do end up quite thirsty when you're stitching so that's why so here's the beginning that's the inside that's the outside so far I want to bring in ribbons I want to bring in stitched found pieces and really embellish the front of this, make this really pretty. This one will continue. I will keep keep you posted on this one as well. And um, and I hope you just enjoy a little bit of flashback to last summer, and look forward to some adventures this year. Um, and we'll see what happens. And in the meantime, I shall say ta-ta for now. Um, Rosie, do you want to say goodbye? Rosie, Rosie, do you want to come and say goodbye? Come and say goodbye. Come and say goodbye. Say bye. Come here. Come here. You want to come up? Oh, Rosie. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Good girl. Good girl. So from Rosie and I, we will see you again soon. Um, and um, thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting. And, uh, and I hope you enjoy it. Take care. Yeah.